Well, thank you very much. Well, uh, it's my great pleasure to be here. Well, I'm a bit embarrassed to hear that I'm the first speaker. But actually, uh, uh, a bunch of UCLA people are waiting for my lecture at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon at, in Tokyo. So <laughs> that's probably why uh, I have to talk and I have to leave. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, I, I'll be here well, as long as possible. Uh, to communicate with you. And, and I'm uh, obviously uh, totally amateur in the uh, software industry. Uh, so I'll talk about uh, the hardware things mostly, but on the service, service sector also. But uh, uh, probably uh, we can translate most of the things into the situation of software. Uh, because uh, what I'm do using uh, as a framework for analyzing well, manufacturing in a broad sense, including maybe so, uh, well, solution and, uh, and innovation and others, uh, uh, this can be applied to, to, to pretty many things. Actually, I'm now heading the Manufacturing Management Research Center at Tokyo University, uh, but uh, my students are doing uh, various things. Actually, yesterday we were discussing hospital management, so hospitals, supermarkets, all these things are included. Uh, some, well, we have to now talk, to, talk about agriculture in some other conferences. Agriculture is a part of manufacturing thinking. And uh, uh, software, yes, we have uh, game software uh, researchers. Uh, we have uh, embedded software people. Uh, we, we, we have very weak uh, package software, so there are not many of them doing this. But uh, uh, there are some and animation, of course. Uh, and cars and uh, trucks and uh, constructions uh, are fashion business. Uh, let's see, uh, process industry like chemicals. I mean, all these things are, are well included in uh, our research. Uh, so, uh, so software is included, but I, I won't talk about software. Actually, I, uh, I was uh, at Harvard some uh, 20 something years ago. Uh, uh, as, a, as a PhD student, and, and my uh, supervisor was Kim Clark, who became a dean of Harvard Business School. And we were doing a, a, a book on product development together at that time. So we visited uh, uh, Mercedes in Germany, in Stuttgart, and my uh, uh, supervisor, Kim Clark, uh, had spoke very good uh, German. So he made a speech uh, in German. And then uh, the Mercedes people came and po very politely said that, well, uh, please speak in English because your uh, German sounds like a speech by kindergarten students. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't uh, make this mistake, so <laughs> I will not touch upon the software things, uh, but uh, please translate uh, what I say, uh, pos if possible, into the software situation. Then I I'll probably uh, make some ad hoc comments on uh, the relation between hardware and software. Well, because I'm, I'm this kind of person, I'm, I'm visiting the, those uh, factories maybe all, every, almost every week. I visited about 20 this year, so almost uh, once a week. And probably uh, 2,000 in my career, uh, probably more. Uh, so, so, so I'm uh, doing uh, uh, the research based on so-called uh, ground theory. I mean, just always on, in, in the, on the ground, and and uh, uh, they'll test the hypothesis every time I visit those people, and then those the ordinary people just uh, say something about the current situations, and if that makes sense uh, from my uh, framework point of view, then I say uh, at the end of the day that my framework or my hypothesis survived this year, today, maybe not tomorrow, but uh, today. So that's uh, my stance, and. Uh, I did a lot of studies, uh, actually, but not, not only in Japan. Last month, I was in German, uh, in uh, India, just uh, well, visiting uh, well, a dozen of companies. Uh, so, so this is the way. So, <coughs> uh, when I start my research, I always start uh, my thinking from uh, Gemba. Gemba is a manufacturing site, field, or whatever, like factories. Okay, and of course, firms are the collections of the uh, of, of Gemba or the, the, the sites, uh, and of course the software development centers are of, of, of course uh, included in this kind of things, Gemba. Uh, and the company's a collection of Gemba, or uh, the, the, the site, uh, under one capital control. And industry is uh, also the bunch of uh, those uh, Gemba, uh, which uh, shares the same kind of or similar uh, types of, uh, of design information. 
So uh, our, thing, our, our sort of notion of uh, manufacturing is broad in a sense. Actually, we, we call it monozukuri. In Japanese, it's called monozukuri. Uh, well, uh, literally, it's, it's, it's uh, making things. If you just translate, just, just mono is a make uh, things, tsukuri is making. So uh, making things is, is, is just the, the, the word, uh, the translation of manufacturing. But our notion of mono tsukuri is probably a bit broader than manufacturing in that it includes, obviously includes uh, the, the uh, software engineers uh, or just product development, development engineers. Uh, and probably solution uh, service engineers uh, or salespeople even. Uh, because we are talking about the control creation and the control of design information to the customers. So making good flow of uh, good design information to the customers. This is probably the broadest uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, definition of manufacturing in a broad sense, or what we call monozukuri. And so, so our target is this. So, so that's why we sometimes go to the hospitals and. Uh, uh, of course, in Sweden, I, I sometimes go to Sweden uh, to make a speech. Uh, hundreds of people come, and about half of them are non-manufacturing people there. There, the, the lean service or lean hospital idea is, is very advanced. It's probably more advanced than Japan, although they are trying to use the basic principles of a typical Toyota system, Toyota production system, uh, uh, and they get the incense and then translate that into this, this service situation. And uh, uh, that, that means that, for example, while the Toyota is trying to make a good flow of steel from uh, the, uh, the uh, sheet steel to the body, uh, so, so they are trying to make a good flow of steel, uh, they, uh, the, the hospitals are obviously making uh, a good flow of patients. Uh, and uh, so, so the, the, of course, the, uh, there are clear difference between the manufacturing uh, and the service in the sense. But uh, the, the, the real essence of how to make a great, good, good, good flow is, 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 is amazingly the same. So uh, we, that's why actually the Toyota uh, well, veterans, uh, retired people, are often uh, teaching how to make good flows in the supermarket and actually also, also, also the, 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 the hospitals. And, uh, uh, and other service sectors also, as well as agriculture, actually. So that's the basic idea of a broad idea of, of monosophy. And there, uh, there are two, uh, well, main ideas uh, which came up. Actually, many of them are coming from American uh, colleagues, uh, well, like MIT people and uh, Harvard people. Uh, one is uh, capability ideas, well, the, the organizational capabilities in manufacturing. Uh, is like this, you know, and uh, and architecture is another thing. Of course, the modularity is a very basic ideas coming from this uh, architecture theories, or probably axiomatic design theories, which came from from MIT. So uh, this is the framework that I'm using for in, in the past uh, several years, and uh, well, I'm checking this every day. Uh, but I, well, uh, at, at least to me, this can explain a lot of things. Uh, uh, which is happening in industries, not only software, but, but also hardware. And uh, well, to the, the left-hand side, uh, we have uh, the, the uh, capabilities of monozukuri, or manufacturing, which is uh, a bunch of routines uh, which are systematized uh, to make uh, performance advantage uh, in uh, terms of productivity or quality or lead time and others. Uh, that is uh, the, the capabilities. This is a bunch of routines. Uh, and then uh, the, on the right hand side, this is a product process architecture. Uh, this is actually uh, well uh, selected by, by sometimes market and sometimes by the designers. And those two things are, are not exogenous but endogenous, so that uh, they, they are determined by other factors. And history, of course, very, is very important. Uh, the fact that Japan has, uh, well, in the word of uh, uh, Peter Drucker, the famous uh, well, management scholar, uh, he once said that, well, uh, when you see uh, the, the car development teams in America, the American team uh, looks more like a soccer team, uh, no, sorry, a uh, baseball team. The Japanese product development team uh, looks more like a soccer team. Okay. 
And in the skill soccer team, of course, so you have uh, about probably dense teamwork and uh, mul or multi skilling, uh, uh, multi skilled uh, players. If you're an offense person, you also do defense, okay? And defense people also do offense people, de depending upon the situation. Uh, they, uh, baseball is, of course, they, they have collaboration and teamwork, but uh, it's more toward specialization and uh, uh, division labor. If the ball goes to the third base, then you want the first base guy, Maya, will not work. You know, it's it's you know, totally clearly uh, separated in terms of divisional labor. Okay, so, uh, so so Peter Drucker correctly said that with Japan, so for some reasons, has more coordinative capabilities, and probably American uh, Gemba or sites has more. Uh, specific capabilities or specialized capabilities or co combinatorial capabilities or whatever, so different types of capabilities. And uh, uh, of course, uh, well, this is just a tendency, you know. Uh, but uh, well, we clearly see that this is uh, coming partly from culture, but mostly I would say from the history. History matters, and uh, our history is different from the, the history of America, particularly when high growth was happening in the 20, early 20th, 20th century in America, and then late in the 20th century, uh, we had our own high growth era. And later on, China has its own high growth era. And usually, the, what's happening in the, 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 in the history of uh, Gemba, uh, the high growth era, uh, just like our teenager time, uh, has decisive impact on the nature of each individual uh, country's uh, uh, Gemba or the, the sites. Uh, in terms of organizational capabilities. So that's what I'm trying to say. So, uh, the, well, to the extent that uh, the manufacturing capability is, uh, well, uh, uh, has a tendency toward uh, uh, coordination, collaboration, teamwork, uh, as opposed to specialization, expertise, uh, division of labor, uh, that type of ideas. Both are, of course, both are important, but uh, uh, to the extent that you have the, the tendency toward this uh, well, coordination type of things, or I would say coordination uh, rich uh, capabilities. Then, uh, well, uh, old trade theories, maybe starting from Ricardo 200 years ago, uh, we still keep that one because it was proven many, many times. So this is 200 year old uh, Ricardian ideas of a comparative advantage shows that, well, you have to uh, be uh, specialized in uh, what you're good at, and you export. If you're bad at, then you import it. And then the people will be better off, compared with you just uh, you know, protect everything inside the, the, the country. This is a 200-year-old wisdom of David Ricardo. So, so we uh, try to integrate this old trade theories and uh, the new ideas of architectures and uh, design or design-based manufacturing ideas. And then uh, the, one of the uh, uh, tentative conclusion is that, well, Japan tends to, well, there are many exceptions, but there, the Japan tends to be good at uh, something integral. Integral means, uh, in design theory sense, uh, coordination, intensive products. So if you, the, 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 the modular product is, in a sense, uh, coordination-saving products. Uh, you spend a lot of time to really think about uh, the better, uh, better designs, smart designs, to make this coordination saving. And of course, the Japanese are doing this, and uh, everybody, I think, uh, in the world, the engineers are trying to do this. But of course, you have to sell this in the market. And if the market and societies uh, will accept the, the product as it is, that's fine. But if they start to say that, hey, this product needs to be safer, this product must be more, well, energy saving or environmentally friendly, okay? Uh, then that means that you have to, uh, well, face, you have to really uh, handle, cope with uh, so many design constraints. If the constraints become stricter and stricter, then usually it will become, will become more and more difficult to solve this simultaneous equation, simultaneous equation of structural elements and, uh, and functional elements. And uh, that means that the, the product tends to uh, become more uh, integral, okay? This is not because engineers want to do this. This is because the market and societies 
selected. So, so we are now, now we are talking about the evolutionary ideas uh, where engineers make variations of uh, uh, various types of designs. And there, most of the engineers, I think some, some engineers love some, something uh, optimized. You know, uh, well, they just love it. But many of them, uh, most of them, I would say, try to rationalize it, and that means modularization. So for so software people, uh, they're just trying their, their maximum efforts to make a modularization uh, idea, the, well, the, the infuse modularization ideas into uh, their own products. And also, so is the same thing in, in, in the car industry, of course. Okay? Now Volkswagen is trying to make an, uh, the innovative uh, architecture using lots of uh, big chunks of modules, uh, functionally, I would say, nearly complete modules into the cars. And, uh, and uh, they try to revolutionize the cars, uh, the, 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 the designs. Well, probably because of the difference of the capabilities, Japanese companies will not, well, this is a very interesting phase. I mean, because we will see lots of uh, interactions and competitions in terms of design. Uh, and uh, my speculation, based on my, actually my idea here, the capability and the architecture, is that because the Japanese companies' capabilities are different from that of Germans. Uh, again, uh, the Japanese, uh, well, uh, one is, uh, if you uh, have 500 people's uh, the, the development teams, if you compare 500 versus 500 and compare uh, their lead time in product development or uh, productivity in product, product development. Actually, uh, we have been uh, measuring this in the past uh, 25 years together with Harvard people and my, my, my mentor, Tim Clark. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, always, always, Japanese were much higher in productivity and much shorter in lead time in when 500 people just worked together uh, to make the whole vehicle. So that means that in terms of capabilities, uh, Volkswagen uh, people will probably realize uh, by now that uh, it is very difficult for them to catch up with the, the Japanese in terms of this capability, coordinated capabilities. Then if you have this advantage in coordinated capability, what do you think? I would, if I were, I, I were German engineers, I would think that, well, uh, if you make a game, change a game, and uh, if the game is uh, 50 people versus 50 people, very smart, science-oriented people who can make the whole architecture of the product, okay, uh, 50 versus 50, Volkswagen will win. They have very, very smart people. So, 500 versus 500, 500 well, probably Toyota will win. 50 versus 50, uh, the, not really the, 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 the competition of the product uh, itself, but competition of product architecture. Then Volkswagen people probably thought that they can win. So they are now focusing very much on these ideas on, and try to rationalize uh, and revolutionize the, the product architecture now. So it's quite obvious that, well, uh, T Toyota is probably stronger in coordinated capabilities, and uh, Volkswagen is stronger in terms of, of uh, scientific knowledge on the cars. Okay. So, Volkswagen is now focusing on the change in the architecture. Toyota, because they have a stronger capability in coordination, they will not probably, they will not, they will carefully watch what Volkswagen is doing because they are doing very smart things. But, and yet, they will probably, they will not blindly follow Volkswagen way because they know that their capability is different from the Volkswagen's. So we will see in the next uh, several years, this is really very spe my speculation based on this, this concept, uh, but uh, I would say that, well, there, there will be a lot of competitive interactions between the two major companies in terms of this architecture and capability. One is a king in capability, the other is a king in architecture. Uh, I will see uh, uh, a lot of, and this of course affects uh, how you make embedded softwares. Now cars and embedded softwares is enormous. Uh, in some high-end cars, it's easily more than 10 million lines of cores. Some 100 million <laughs> lines of cores. So it's a gigantic, uh, the, well, embedded softwares. And of course, you have to rationalize this one. So, so some people just to try to make this very modular like European uh, initiative, Autosar, 
uh, is uh, trying to make uh, this uh, you know software more like like uh, the PC kind of like four layer things, and, and and some Japanese say that well yeah we can use this for some areas but if you are uh, trying to control the things control heavy things in a split second like like one uh, millisecond term order. Uh, then uh, this four, uh, four layer things, you know, like, like some PC kind of uh, architecture, will not make it. So they will use uh, different architectures uh, device by device. This is one idea. The other idea is that, well, no, you have to just make the, this, this completely simple uh, and uh, uh, uniform ideas of architectures, uh, which is similar to very PC. So there are again the, the competition there, and uh, there will be lots of interactions uh, in the next uh, maybe 10 years or so. Uh, I, I'm, not a, I'm not saying that well, one is right and one is wrong, because it all depends upon the market. Indian market uh, may love it. Chinese market may not love it. No? Uh, actually, the, the, I, 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 we, we see this, i uh, show you. Uh, India and China are very different in terms of the product architecture as far as car is concerned. I just came back from, from India. The, the India has a small car, very small and cheap car called Tata Nano. I, li I like that, that car. That, that car is more like uh, uh, cheap European cars, <laughs> old cheap European cars. In a sense that the car is very integral. Simply, if you tear down the car, actually I, I test drove this car. It's a, it's a very, very strange, very, very interesting car, okay? And, uh, but then the, some, some people just, uh, well, the, the rivals just uh, were tearing down this car and found that most of the parts, vast majority of the parts are specific to this car, okay? Whereas if you tear down the Chinese cars with the same price, you will see a lot of uh, sort of copy parts, generic parts, so it's more like, but like PC. So, uh, it, looks, it may look like the, the same kind of products and a cheap car coming from emerging countries. Architecture is totally different, totally different. Uh, so I would say that the Indians and Chinese are both, both uh, will become a giant, I think, in the uh, emerging economy. Uh, but their architectural thinking is so far, on average, I would say, on average, very different, very different. So we should uh, take very different approaches to the, to the two industry, two countries in terms of uh, industrial collaborations, both for software and hardware. That's my thinking. All these things are coming from this kind of ideas of uh, architecture and uh, capability. Those two things must be balanced in the long way, uh, long run. In the short run, there can be a, a lot of dynamics, complex dynamics, but uh, in the long run, those two things must be sort of uh, balanced. Now, very uh, classic uh, example, of course, that everybody knows is IBM's uh, decline and uh, comeback. When the, the IBM were, had a like, department store kind of capabilities, it's everything, you know. It, it, they had everything, and that was very good for making mainframe computers. But then the, the architecture of the computer changed from closed architecture to open architecture, open modular architecture. And then, of course, suddenly you, you have this uh, Silicon Valley, which is a village of specialized uh, manufacturers. So it's like a specialized shops, high-end shops, just uh, uh, versus department stores. And department store lost this competition when architecture changed. Okay, and then, uh, then of course, IBM just uh, uh, declined very rapidly. And then uh, they had to do something. So there are two, way, two ways of this, fixing these this problems. One is to change the organizational capabilities according to the change of the, 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 the uh, product architecture. So if the product becomes highly modular, then one way of regaining the balance is to modularize the organization. This is what, exactly what Akers did first. You know. He chopped up the company into the small pieces and try to make a kind of phony uh, specialized shop in the middle of a department store. Okay. But this didn't work because uh, the, the real specialized shops were stronger than some, some, some you know, the quasi specialized shops inside the departments. Uh, so it didn't work. Then Gasner came and what he did was totally you know, uh, reversed. He said, 
Well, I'm a customer. I was a customer in the company, so, so I know that your company's capability is, after all, department store kind of capabilities. So you have to change the product. Well, instead of changing your organization based on the change in the product architecture, you have to change the product based on the, your existing organization capabilities, which is department type, store type capabilities. They have everything. You know? Then, of course, this works very well in other products called the solution. So they switched the product from hardware to solution and started to make a profit of 80% of profit from, from, from this area. And they, they, they came back, see? This is really, uh, well, we, we can well, we'll probably talk about this on and on. Very recent example also, actually, uh, TV set industries. Japanese TV set industry collapsed, as you know, collapsed. Okay. Uh, of course, well, the, the tri people are trying to, to, to come back, uh, but it's very difficult because the, car, the, 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 well, the digital, well, of course, the, the, the TV, when the TV was analog TV, they needed lots of coordination. You know, adjustment time was much longer than uh, assembly time. And uh, like Sony's Trinitron uh, TV was really, this was, is a highly, highly coordinated product, just like cars. So, so in the 1980s, when uh, electric appliances were analog uh, appliances, Jap Japan had two major exporting goods. One is cars, which is integral, coordination intensive. Another one is analog uh, and high-end specialized uh, well, uh, well, uh, uh, electric appliances, uh, like what Sony was making, what Panasonic was making. And they were analog products, and they needed lots of coordination, and that's why the Japanese were strong. But in the middle of the 1990s, of course, the digital revolution happened, and uh, the, uh, the electric appliances also became digital, which means that the product became much uh, more coordination saving. Okay. When it becomes coordination saving, of course, well, the Ricardian trade theory, uh, or design-based uh, Ricardian theory, uh, tells us that, will, will, well, the Japanese uh, uh, TV set industry will decline. Of course, the Japanese uh, personal computer industry also declined in terms of, well, of course, they are still surviving high-end, because high-end PCs are still integral. They are still surviving. And probably high-end TVs in Japan will survive also. Uh, because it's integral. But for modular, for just the ordinary TVs, it became, the flat, flat panel display TVs became uh, highly modular. It became more like a PC, right? And uh, of course, the, 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 there were major companies like Panasonic and, uh, and Sony and the Sharp had uh, probably two major uh, hypotheses on this. One, of course, the Japanese company has to survive in terms of uh, uh, by product differentiation because they cannot compete in cost vis-a-vis -vis China and others. You know, we're talking about like one twentieth uh, of the labor uh, wage uh, cost uh, ten years ago. So they had to differentiate something. So differentiation is coming from uh, panel, flat panel. This was uh, one hypothesis one. Hypothesis two. Uh, flat panel uh, is process-wise, it is integral products. So that's what we are, we are good at, okay? So those two, based on those two hypotheses, okay? Uh, Sharp and uh, made a heavy investment in Japan in terms of uh, flat panel production. Uh, but it looks like they, they, they lost, uh, they, because those two hypotheses were, at least today, as of today, uh, they were not uh, uh, proven to be right, right? And uh, apparently, uh, more accurate hypothesis or the, the, the right hypothesis seems to be that no, the uh, different product differentiation in, in uh, the, uh, the uh, flat panel TV is coming more from uh, engines, right? Chips, that's just like a computer, okay? And uh, Toshiba, another Japanese company, they uh, were uh, believing in this hypothesis. So they, uh, this is not really a big player there, but actually the Toshiba is now rapidly uh, increasing their market share, at least in the domestic market. And they're making, making profit, okay? Why? Uh, to me, to me uh, they made very uh, important decisions uh, a couple of years ago 
to uh, integrate personal computer division and TV division. The only company, the, the only Japanese company which did it. Okay? That means that they infuse this uh, very different organizational capabilities from computer industry, com computer division, which was very, very good at mo making modular things. Look at the uh, Toshiba PCs. They are global products, and they are highly modular, right? Compared with like PC, uh, Panasonic PC, which is very integral, or NEC PC, which is very integral, okay? So Toshiba P uh, P P PC uh, division uh, was, uh, had a capability, historically, I would say, historically. Even in Japan, uh, history matters, and their history was such that Unlike many other Japanese companies, they had a, had a capability of making modular things very well. Okay? So imagine if you have this, the infusion of these capabilities into TV divisions by this merging. You know, TV set, uh, well, the, 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 the division quickly changed their organization capabilities. And now they can make uh, these uh, uh, highly modular uh, digital TVs very efficiently compared with other Japanese companies. So they are uh, making the, 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 uh, the great increase in market shares and also making profits. Might be more profitable than some Koreans. You know? So again, capability and the architecture must be balanced. You can change the product, uh, you can change the organization, you can do both. But uh, in the long run, I think that the balance will create uh, some comparative advantage in design. That's my view. Well, it's uh, still two, two pages, so I have to, well, finish very quickly. But I'll just, uh, well, uh, go through very quickly here, uh, because this is a basically evolutionary framework. Evolutionary framework means that we have to think about, when you talk, talk about something, some artifacts, uh, you have to think about structures and functions and emergence of, uh, of the, that artifact. And uh, if you have to, to explain all the three things, then you are talking about evolutionary thinking, evolutionary ideas, uh, just like a Darwin's ideas, uh, where uh, you have structure, uh, function, and emergence, uh, but they are totally different logic, so, so you have to really think about all three. And then uh, these insights were derived from design-based uh, framework uh, is this, well, uh, by the way, design can be applied to hardware and software and service and agriculture everywhere. So, so the design is, uh, well, this is what maybe Howard Simon idea that design is the single most important word in not only natural science, but also social science. Uh, so that's uh, what uh, we are trying. Design-based concept of manufacturing. And general tendency of possible Japanese manufacturing sites, uh, which was, was uh, well, Gemba. Uh, we had lots of uh, coordination rich sites. Toyota is one uh, prominent example, but we have many others. If you go to about 1,000 uh, of the, those factories in Japan uh, right now, many of them are still teamwork oriented. Small companies, medium sized companies, or well, even uh, well, development centers uh, or supermarkets, uh, they are highly uh, well, uh, teamwork oriented. We call this so-called Obea, like this room. We we working just uh, the, the engineers working in the large room. Actually, my university in my <laughs> uh, research room it's Obea also. Okay, so so uh, the, the bunch of students are working as a team. Okay, uh, this is different from uh, the uh, genius people. Uh, well, maybe typical American situation where the genius people, because the, the, the genius people come to America, you know, from all over the world, and uh, they get a uh, separate room uh, to deep thinkly about their own module. And then we get a nice module, interface already in, uh, well, standardized, so you just say, hey, this is genius product. And then you sort of mix and match those genius things, and then you make genius things as a whole, okay? But then, Japanese will say that, oh no, you know, you have to make lots of coordination to make the whole thing working, okay? Because it's integral. You know? so, so, of course, you know, this obviously uh, has good thing and bad thing. If the market follows this, ma market says that, yes, this is a good thing. Interior products is obviously different from modular things. Interior products is much higher in functionality, aesthetics, uh, balance, uh, fuel efficiency, safety, uh, environmental friendliness. You know, if 
you say that it's clearly different, then those integrated products will win. And that's exactly what's happening in the car industry. That's why Japanese car industry is still strong uh, in Japan and uh, the world. Uh, last year, ja ja Japanese as a whole, Japanese designed products, uh, their cars, uh, were about 24 million last year, but one third of the world. Uh, Toyota became, the, again, the largest uh, well, uh, company, country, com company in the world in the middle of this recession and also in appreciation. Uh, so, relatively speaking, I would say, relatively speaking, car industry is still fairly strong industry in Japan. This is quite obvious because of the, the, the comparative advantage theories, uh, 200 years old theories, it simply tells us that you have to be something that you are good at. Any countries, we're not talking about Japan. You know, Japan just, so, just, just by chance, we were good at cards and other interactive products. But uh, of course, America has a very different you know, uh, histories, uh, mostly uh, well, coming from the fact that there are massive immigrants, inflow of immigrants. We didn't have that in Japan. Okay? In China, there was uh, also massive migrations, maybe hundreds of thousands of people just coming from inland to, 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 to coastal areas uh, when they were growing very rapidly. So uh, the experience of high growth era is very different in America, in Europe, of course. Uh, in Europe, of, of, they are different. In Sweden, it's very different. In Italy, it's very different. In France, it, I mean, they, are, they are different. But uh, uh, they are different, and, and, and Jap Japanese, Chinese, you know, Indians, they are different. India, of course, it's a huge country, but the people are not moving there. You know, if there are the high you know, booming industries uh, in Gurgaon or Pune or uh, Chennai, which is right now, if a Calcutta is not booming not right now, if it's in China, there will be massive inflow of people from Calcutta to, to Pune or Gurgaon. But it's not happening there. People are not moving because of the cultural, uh, religious, uh, his historical reasons. So the, the, the way India develops, in the, the, they go through the, the high uh, uh, growth era, will be very different from that of China, I would say. Okay. And that with, with Japan, that with Korea. So, so just simply, history matters. And one of the, 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 the historical uh, result is probably that Japan, Japanese uh, in the post-war era created lots of coordination-rich sites. Then, of course, the design-based compared to advanced theories, uh, makes you predict that the, uh, the Japanese will be good at coordination intensive products, which is interactive products. Okay. Then, I talk about this in uh, the, the economics department, I talk about this in uh, the engineering department, and of course, engineering people always, uh, well, in many cases, get angry at this, okay, saying that, well, look, you know, in our team, interior architecture is called stupid design, okay? Uh, because smart people will modularize the products, okay? Uh, so this means that Japanese are good at stupid things, <laughs> okay? Uh, I say, well, no. Well, I, I actually, uh, well, to understand this, uh, we have to borrow some of the, the, the other economic ideas. Exposed and exante and uh, macro and micro, okay? If you're talking about the uh, like details of this product, for example, okay? And if you find this part can be modularized, this part can be modularized, this part can be modularized. So actually, the car industry, people are doing this, actually. They try to make the product modular as much as possible, okay? As much as, uh, that means, as much as uh, market permits, society permits, okay? Safety regulation permits or fuel efficiency or environmental friendliness uh, regulations uh, permits, okay? Then we'll try your best to modularize things. So, so the, yes, they are trying to modularize the products, but there's a limitation. In their case, because the car is one-ton product operated in open space, public space, uh, 100 kilometer per hour, okay? If you hit the, pro the people, the people die, okay? You spend lots of energies. This physical product, it, that this fact, this reality will not change maybe 20, 30, 50 years ago, uh, 50 years from now, I'm sorry. Okay? Uh, because car is car. Okay? Of course, the, the idea of mobility will change over time, but we need certain uh, weight. So it's a weighty product. 
Okay? And so, so it's, it has to follow physical laws. This is different from, I think, the, the most of the uh, digital products, particularly software products, which is sort of almost free from, from that, I think. Uh, people may disagree that with that, but uh, to, to us, at least from the cars, cars are one ton. I, I've never heard about it, like one ton software. No? <laughs> that's just the, the open road. No? <laughs> Millions of line codes, but it's still almost weightless, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that it's, it's not well following uh, uh, for like a, a physical law. It's, it's, it's based on electron uh, logics, those weightless things. You know? So, yes, modularity, everybody, software people, hardware people, everybody just is pursue modularity. But uh, the limitation is different. The constraints uh, which is imposed upon these products are different uh, depending upon the nature of products. You know? Uh, you throw their, uh, their uh, uh, smartphone, but you, don't, you can't kill people. But uh, uh, the cars can kill people. You know? And we are talking about now 100 million. Well, we pro the, 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 the annual production is, uh, is gradually approaching to 100 million cars and trucks. Uh, the cars in operation in, globe, in the globe will reach probably 1 billion so some days. And of course, that will create lots of problems. Lots of problems. Cars create lots of problems. So that's why they have to keep on innovation. They are not allowed to stop innovation because the product itself has the original thing. You know, they have safety problems, uh, and energy problems, and environment problems. Those are the original thing of the products. So they have to really just keep on this innovating. You know, the society will not allow them to stop it. Okay, that's why the cars has to become more or less integral. Even, I would say, the car is, uh, will, be, uh, will, be, will be more or less integral, exposed. As in terms of macro-architecture, macro-architecture means the, the car as a whole. There are some part, modular parts, like tires, which is more, more modular than suspension, which is very integral. Okay? The car has, you know, if you just tear down the car, there's some parts are very integral, other parts are very modular. But on average, on average, if you, for example, count the number of specific parts, for example, okay, specific, specific parts, when you have a new car, brand new car, from Ford or from uh, Volkswagen or from, from Toyota, if you tear down the car, uh, it's quite likely that, well, actually, we measure this, well, we're constantly measuring this, uh, somewhere between 60 to 80 percent of the parts. Uh, when you tear down the car into maybe 1,000 1, uh, functional parts, okay? uh, those parts will be mostly uh, product specific, specific to this car, customized to this product. Okay? Uh, this is a fact, 60 to 80%. Why? Because of these constraints. But of course, if you just, uh, just do the same counting in uh, PCs, probably over 50% will be generic parts the parts you can use for other products. Bicycles, yes, no, it's very modular. But high-end motorcycles, it's very integral, okay? Like, uh, well, you can actually share the components between Harley Davidson and Honda, okay? But it can happen in China. In China, in China they have their own motorcycle industry. It started from the copy parts from Honda, uh, but now they have varieties. They have varieties, but still, it is more like, uh, uh, well, the bicycle. So, it's, so, so Chinese motorcycle industry is highly modular. And you can tell the consequence. You know, they have, I don't know how many. Well, my, I heard at one time that they had 400 motorcycle man manufacturers in China. Okay. In Japan, there are four. In India, also, there are on, only three, four, five, I think. Because Indian motorcycles are integral. Chinese in motorcycles are modular. So you cannot tell that, well, the car is car or motorcycle is motorcycle. Motorcycle can be different, depending upon, again, the constraints. The Chinese uh, well, motorcycles are mostly the, 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 the rural product. They, 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 actually, they are not allowed to be operated in big cities, in big, 60 big cities. They are not allowed. So if you go to China, big cities, you won't see the motorcycles. You see a lot of electric you know, bikes, but uh, you won't see that because it's banned. Because it's banned, uh, and also because most of these uh, well, st uh, strict uh, demanding constraints and uh, functional requirements are coming from city owners. 
they are allowed to make these cars very modularized. Okay? But if you go to, for example, uh, uh, well, anywhere, uh, India or Vietnam, their motorcycles are more, more, more like uh, uh, the uh, integral product. Because the city owners, Ho Chi Minh cities, Hanoi cities, those people are just using this. And for them, even though the, 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 the income is much lower than China, their demand is much higher in terms of safety. Uh, because you're talking about the whole family, just, just driving. If the car stops, the whole family is gone. You know? so, so, so it's very, very high, uh, well, strict in demand in Thailand, in India, in, in Vietnam. So their, their products are much more integral than China, for example. You know? So again, uh, that's why we say that, well, the, the architecture is not exogenous. It's not given. It's coming from two things, majorly. One, one is engineers' efforts to modularize the product. Probably that's what uh, you're, you're trying, I think. But at the same time, the, uh, it's determined, well, it's determined ex ante, okay? So, so, so to, 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 to yeah, we'll say this precisely, to uh, 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 make the, the product, the engineers ex ante tries to modularize the microarchitecture of the given products as much as possible, right? Uh, but ex post, market and societies will determine the macro architecture of the products. Uh, so if that means that the, market, uh, the society in the market imposes lots of strict functional requirements or uh, constraints, then other things being equal, the, the, the product in question will become more integral. Again, other things being equal. Okay. That's the, the, the kind of idea that we are saying. So, so that means that probably the uh, ideas of trying to modularize the product as much as possible in terms of mi mi micro architectures of the product is right, and uh, that is totally consistent with or compatible with the idea that some products become integral because of the so social or market constraints. Okay? Those two ideas, again, one is ex ante micro, the other is ex post macro, those two things can be totally com compatible. That's exactly what we are seeing, in, for example, car industry. Again, as a whole car industry, it's integral. But if you look at the, 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 those, those small pieces and also the software, uh, 10 uh, uh, million lines of, of, of codes, uh, we, they try to make this integral, it's modular. Right? Nobody tries to make this integral. At the end of the day, they become integral. Right? So that, that's the basic idea. So, so probably at 10 minutes, I have, uh, I have no things, but uh, they probably I will stop somewhere. Uh, so I just go through very quickly. The key idea is this design information uh, is the source of value. And uh, this strange thing is uh, what I see is uh, cops or, well, PCs or uh, uh, bottles, uh, chairs. I mean, these things are all combinations of design information and this medium, right? This is actually Aristotle's idea. So this is a 2,000-year-old idea that Aristotle said that it is, everything is a combination of form and materials. Right? We're still sticking to these ideas. And then, if you're talking about uh, tangible medium, and if the design information is sticking to the, the tangible uh, medium, then it's usually called uh, uh, hardware. Right? And if Intangible medium uh, is, is attached to uh, the design information. Uh, this is, well, if this is a functional information, okay? If functional design information is attached to the intangible uh, medium, it is service. If structural uh, design information, like source code, you know, is attached upon something intangible, well, of course, it's like electromagnetic media, uh, so it's not totally. <laughs> Uh, intangible, but uh, very intangible, okay? Uh, uh, then it's called software, probably. So then we can probably define software, service, and hardware in this Aristotle, I mean, those very old ideas, Aristotle manner. Okay. Then what we are saying in manufacturing is this whole flow of design information. It's much broader than just making things, cutting things and other things. You know, because product, it's much broader than production, because that includes Actually, even sales, production, sales, development, it's a total flow 
of uh, uh, making value, good value carrying design information to the customers. Right? And probably this idea is the same between software and hardware. And here, of course, the, the production is nothing but a marriage of uh, media and uh, design information. You know, for example, if you have uh, stamping, the moment you have stamping, you know, design information is transferred from dyes to 0.8 millimeter thick steel. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing every year, every day. Okay? And this is very difficult. That's why Japanese are good at this, because the team just think about how to make the things without crack, without those uh, well, problems with copies. But in software, production is not a big part, right? Copy command. That's it. Okay. So production uh, is a very small part. Development is a big part in software. But in the case of cars, production is also important. Right? So there are differences, but differences coming from the difference in the way they copy the, the information or the transfer the information to the materials, uh, or what I would say, production. Or the nature of the, probably the nature of the, the media. But uh, to convey value carrying design information to the customers, this is the same. This is the same between software, hardware, service, even agriculture. That's our ideas of broad, broadly defined manufacturing or monozukuri in Japanese. So from steel, steel point of view, you have the, like four shots of the diet. So you get the copies of copy commands four times. But this is, again, this, this is much difficult by, than, than copy command. It's, it creates something very messy. Okay. That's why uh, a team of production people have to work together very deeply every day, uh, making hundreds of thousands of kaizen every year per ca company, uh, because the, 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 this is endless problems. So at the end of the day, the product is design information and media. And production is a kind of marriage of design information and media. Uh, but this is, uh, well, in the case of software, this is not a, a big part, because this is copy command things. Okay. And again, software and hardware, if you see, see like this, uh, uh, in a sense similar, in a sense similar. Uh, of course, uh, well, the, the one is creating the flow of happy customers, happy customer experience. The other is making a good flow of good materials. So uh, they are different, but uh, at the end of the day, the purpose is the same, to making the people smile. Uh, so this is a supermarket. Actually, I can make exactly the same kind of chart for Toyota. Uh, for some restaurant in Fukuoka. You know, basically, the, 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 the same thing to make the, the, the customer smile. At the end of the day, buy good design information, good flow of good design information. That's it. Capabilities, I already talked about this coordinative capabilities, this part, lift part. And this is nothing but a, a bunch of routines. Toyota say that Toyota has 400 routines to make a good flow to the customers. Uh, I, can't, I can count only 200 or so, so I have to, I can't, I'm a bit lagging behind Toyota, but uh, uh, yes, I believe that they have 400, okay? But all 400 has simple, very simple things. All of them are trying to make a good flow of good, and they always say that uh, flow first, cost next. If you focus on co cost first, then you will not make a good flow. But if you make a good flow, then quality and cost will follow. That, that's the basic of Toyota system. So follow, flow is the single most important word. Okay. And they try to make a good flow in terms of higher productivity and higher quality, like TPS, TQM. Uh, well, I will skip that, but uh, well, there are many ways to improve the productivities. And uh, currently, for example, believe me, most of the Japanese uh, factories has, uh, 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 well, of course, Americans and others also, uh, uh, even ja ja Japanese, uh, have uh, some rooms for pr uh, the productivity improvement in terms of tw two times, three times, five times or so. I recently saw uh, one company improving the factory line productivity by three times in two, eight, two years. Easy, easy, because there are mathematical uh, reason for that. I will not well, touch on that, on that, but basically this red part, value adding time. When you are working at eight hours, what is a fraction of your value adding, real value adding time, okay? Not walking time, okay? Not waiting time, okay? Value adding time, okay? What would it be? Hitachi people say that, well, in software engineers, hardware engineers, it's probably less than 
and in the factory's floor also, it's less than 10 percent. And mathematics tells you that you know, if this number doubles, other things be equal, productivity will double. Very simply. Okay? That's why most of the factory in the world has, has, I think, the potential to improve the productivity by two, three, four, five times easily. Toyota, no. Because Toyota's uh, well, uh, uh, value adding time ratio is already 50%. Too high. <laughs> okay. So they probably improved the productivity by 50% in the past 20 years. Good job, good job, but only 50%. But others lagging behind Toyota in terms of this number, actually they have much more potential, I think, even including Japanese factories in Japan. Okay. So these are flow man management analysis. I will just skip that. But this is what the one. Well, uh, I believe in this notion of economy of scarcity. Uh, this was an unintended effect. Of, uh, of the Japanese post-war history. Okay, Japan uh, lost the war, but again, the, the, the Cold War happened, which made uh, the Allied force people think that Japan can be uh, stronger again. Okay, well, the, the, uh, instead of a weak democratic country, Japan can be stronger because Japan is in a strategic position here in the west, western part of the Pacific Ocean. So probably we are allowed, maybe, maybe, uh, to, uh, to grow fast, but without immigrants. We had some people coming from agriculture areas, but the number was much smaller than China, for example, than India. So we had these problems uh, of chronic labor shortage. When you have chronic labor shortage, switching cost of labor cost goes up. This is economics. And if that is the case, then it's not just culture, but also economical, rationally economical uh, decision, which makes our organizations uh, long-term employment oriented, long-term transaction oriented. Then, if you have this kind of thing, then of course teamwork is, is emerging naturally. Coordination rich uh, places will pop up everywhere in, the, in, in Japan, 1950s and 60s. And this is exactly when Toyota system was established. Right? So coordination uh, rich capabilities were uh, emerging uh, after the war. And we call this economy of scarcity. Economy of scale, yes. Economy of scope, yes. But we also have economy of scarcity. And well, architecture things, I, well, the framework uh, of uh, these uh, uh, performance, I'm sorry for this time, uh, is, uh, well, multi layered. And if you look at the profit, Japanese companies, the uh, profit r r number is very poor. So this is say, oh, this is the end of Japanese economy. They are so poor in profit. Yes, that's right. Okay, in market share, some of them are growing, some of them are declining. So it's like a winning and losing, winning and losing. Uh, so market performance, but product performance, I mean, productive performance on the, 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 uh, the like less productivity, okay, or quality. They still have an advantage, like like this one. This is uh, well, the the uh, lower side is Japan actually. This, this number, the lower. Uh, the, uh, the number, the higher the productivity. Okay, so uh, Japanese still keeps uh, the, the uh, high in many uh, things that we are measuring. And Japanese are still being, uh, well are getting high productive uh, productive performance, uh, but it's not connected to market performance or profitability. That is a problem. So we always, I always say that well, Japanese problem is strong factory weak headquarters. It's always the case, so, so, so that's why I always go to factories. Uh, the, the, the company owners are not calling me because I'm always just <laughs> saying bad thing about them. Uh, architecture, well, I would not, well, this is your, your thing, well, the, the specialty, so I will not uh, repeat this one. But things are sometimes modular, sometimes integral. And we can measure this, this is a kind of steel case. We can actually measure this is uh, integral steel, which Japan is exporting to Korea. This is a steel that Korea is exporting to Japan, modular. Okay, so this is uh, also the case uh, where we see everywhere. So we see uh, closed integral, closed modular, and open modular things. And of course, open modular things are the, the PC kind of things. Car is closed integral. Again, in terms of macro architecture, macro architecture, not to talking about micro architecture. Okay. The car is, uh, in a sense, a macro architecture, it's integral, closed integral. Uh, of course, this is uh, closed modular, and this is open modular. And Japanese are good at this. And, and of course, these things are determined, well, again, uh, well, uh, by environment, user environment, and also comp competition environment. 
Uh, and that's why these things move. It's not static, it's moving. Uh, well, and of course many of the things moved from integral to, to modular, particularly in digital products. That's why I think you know, this, this conference, I think, is focusing on modularity, which I totally agree, totally agree. But it is, again, uh, microarchitecture is, is variation, but it's selected by the market. Okay? So in evolutionary I, I thinking, uh, we have to think about the exposed, again, exposed macroarchitecture, ex ante microarchitecture, which are different. And uh, I think the, you may focus on microarchitecture, ex ante, but uh, we economists and society, well, social scientists may focus more on the macro uh, exposed architectures. That uh, creates some apparent difference, but I think the, uh, deep inside, these two ideas are totally compatible. Because it's a loop of macro micro architecture. We call it a macro micro root loop. You know, well, 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 that will be this. So, what I was talking about as social scientist was selection of macro architecture by markets. You are talking about micro architecture selection by engineers. Again, two things in this evolutionary framework are totally compatible. And in terms of macro things, we can talk about this cost and performance uh, diagram. And of course, well, the expansion means that with the technical level, technical level of progress. And we see the exact, well, the, the real examples of the old cases of Casio and Sharp. And of course, in, 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 depending upon the, the architecture uh, well, uh, types, uh, the, the, the shape of this uh, well, curve will be different. So if you have this envelope, and obviously, again, if the market Average market or average customer is uh, performance-oriented. They are more likely to pick uh, interior architecture products. If you are uh, price-oriented, then they are more likely to, to pick uh, the modular products. Okay. Again, at macro architecture. So micro architecture, of course, you just have to make a, well, efforts to make modular things modular in any case. So the products, the, in the case of cars also, car became, it might become simpler or, 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 or more complex. In the long run, I believe that uh, probably, in the long run, uh, it will become uh, complex, probably. Uh, so that's why we have had to prepare. And of course, Volkswagen trying to make this kind of things. Uh, again, exactly exposed, uh, well, architecture is different. Uh, the cars will, uh, will try to make the, the, the big platform, uh, but it's always failing. So now, Actually, the idea is to make a smaller module, uh, which can be realized, actually. This is the basic idea of Volkswagen, and uh, they're doing pretty well. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Toyota and other companies watching what would happen, and well, they will just uh, get whatever is, uh, makes sense to them. But they will not probably blindly follow the Volkswagen way. Why? Because the capability is different. Again, uh, if capability is different, architecture can be different. So. So that, because of that, these are our statistical analysis, which also shows that uh, the higher the integrality of the product, the higher the export ratio of the, of the Japanese product. Again, this is Japanese product. In the case of, uh, of uh, like China and Korea, it's different. China is highly modular. Korea is mixed, uh, and Japan is mixed, but it's more likely the, 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 the modular, uh, the, the integral things. Korea in the middle. So, so if you look at these things. Uh, integral products uh, about producers and modular product producers. U.S. high-tech product, uh, modular products, yes. China, labor-intensive products. Uh, Korea, uh, capital-intensive modular products. In Japan, relatively high-tech uh, integral products. But who is making, going to make their uh, labor-intensive, low-cost integral products? Maybe not China. If you're talking about China, maybe northern part of China, yes. Not southern part of China. We are talking about the, the, the labor stability and the labor mobility. If labor mobility is high, it's less likely that you get multi-skilled workers. Uh, so that means that, well, probably uh, some part of India, except Bangalore, I would say. Bangalore is more like America, but other part of India uh, can make uh, more integral products. And uh, Dialen, for example. Lots of Japanese software companies are going to Dialen uh, to make embedded softwares. Why? Because their labor market is sta more stable than southern part of China, uh, which makes sense because uh, they will, they, then they can keep people for seven years, eight years, 
for embedded software, you have to understand software and hardware both. So you need to keep people for at least five years, if you see, six years, seven years. You cannot do this in the southern part of China. You can do this in the northern part of China, like that. Right? That's my, again, theory coming from this. So a car is not a car. This is integral. This is a very modular car in China, very modular car in China. But this car is integral. So you have to really look, tear down the car, but look, look at the, the individual cars by one by one, because the car is not car. Maybe just like software is not software, okay? And uh, another problem is that we ha have pr the problem of the uh, uh, scientific problem. We are not good at scientific products. We are good at trial and error products. Uh, if, uh, and this is exactly why probably we are now uh, looking at uh, the decline of the Japanese uh, 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 step-up companies. ASML is now a champion. Japanese are declining. Why? Because this become product has become scientific products. And Japanese are not good at scientific products. And what, what would happen, actually we did the, the simulation. The simulation say that Japan will lose uh, if the product becomes high scientific. Because Japan will become stupid, uh, rapid, rather than smart turtle. You see that, 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 that story? You know? And we, we, we were like, like we, unless we do something very, very drastic, uh, this will happen. The Toyota problem is also, this was a, Toyota was a victim partly of the, the complexity. They were too confident, maybe overconfident that they can handle any kind of complexity. No, they cannot, they couldn't, okay? So uh, complexity is a demon. I mean, they, we, we have to really handle. That's why I think people are trying to make the, the, the product as modular as possible. But this, again, effort, exact effort, uh, is sometimes different from ex post effect. Uh, which is determined by market and society. So we are doing a lot of things together uh, to, to make the, uh, the, the, to deal with the complex products, but it's not easy. So, sorry, industry uh, evolution uh, and uh, marathon still continues, and the software and hardware both uh, will I think, have this problem. But I think I believe that well, the knowledge sharing between hardware people, software people, and service people based on this kind of design ideas, I think we'll, we'll make a lot of richer, I think, insights on both sides, service, software, and hardware. Thank you very much. I think we can still, uh, we can get a few questions. Uh, yes, please. Yes. Uh, my phone, oh, bad, sorry. Just, yeah, student volunteer has a microphone. Um, I wonder if there is a relationship uh, with respect to modular versus integrated with the kind of product, if it's high-end, where the customer requires more variety and more uh, uh, adaptability versus low-end, where you can have a standard product. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. I mean, you, you, what you said is exactly uh, in sync with uh, this uh, Things because well, I talked about con social constraints, for example, so safety and other things. But uh, of course, uh, other things is functional requirements by the customer themselves. And if it's very high, uh, it's more likely because it's, it becomes design constraints. It, it will become more like integral products. Other things be cool. That's, that's that's very very correct. And sometimes we, we call those uh, customers which are very very strict uh, and specific in terms of their functional requirement, otaku. Have you heard that? Uh, you, you should be, in, you, you come to Japan, you should understand this otaku. Otaku uh, lives in Akihabara. <laughs> Those people. <laughs> you should go to Haki Akihabara. Well, Akihabara is very different from Akihabara 20 years ago. 20 years ago, ordinary people were buying this consumer appliances. Now, a bunch of otaku uh, enthusiasts, maniac people no. in figures, uh, animations, costumes, you know, it's an amazing place, you know. And they are very, very strict at these things. And the, 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 there are some producers of Otaku products, you know, and those are mostly integral. Gary, okay. do, do you have a question? Yes. How would you apply this analysis to universities? I mean, universities are in turmoil. Uh, Chimneys, yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I'm not sure how in America, but maybe in America there are lots of innovations happening, I, I believe. 
that in Japan uh, still it's old. Uh, well, of course, they're trying to innovate many things, but it's still it's a chimneys. The same thing for hospitals. You know, hospitals, actually, we try to introduce uh, the lean ideas of good flow patient ideas to the hospitals. Guess where is the best place to introduce this? People in the emergency unit fully understood this quickly, immediately. So they quickly introduced this. Who are the most stubborn people in the hospital in Japan and also in Sweden? I asked the same thing. That's it. The answer was exactly the same. Surgeons. <laughs> Why? Because they are God hands. You know, they believe that I am a alcoholic. I am a great people. So, so if my utilization ratio is 100 percent, everybody will be saved. You know, this is the right idea as a human being, but this is the wrong idea in, in the, the management of hospitals. I mean, you have to make a good flow, and this man will become uh, the kind of big, you know, blocks and uh, inventories or the waiting lines will, will be created uh, around them. You know, so, so I think the hospitals, universities, uh, we need to actually. Our place and uh, it, well, now it's got a lot of good connection with the, uh, the uh, engineering department, Tokyo University. Uh, why? Because we are uh, more like a guerrilla war unit. Uh, Manufacturing Management Research Center actually lost, uh, we, we lose uh, uh, the government fundings in uh, one week. Next week, we will uh, uh, get no money from the government, uh, so we have to uh, make our own livings. No financial aid from the university headquarters. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have to team up with other people who can share this idea. So we are now teaming up with, uh, uh, rather than the economics department, we just have tried to make uh, this uh, uh, horizontal ties. So this kind of uh, idea, well, uh, well uh, idea of integration, coordination uh, across uh, the departments may happen from the peripheral areas, <laughs> like us, <laughs> because we are a very small department. Uh, the big ones usually stick to the Timonese. Uh but uh, there are always people in, uh, playing a guerrilla war in all universities, I think. Maybe minority, maybe weak, uh, but uh, I think 10 years from now we, can, we may become some, some engines for that. I okay, hope. thank you. Uh, I, uh, uh, but, uh, okay, <laughs> quick question please. <laughs> okay, I was wondering, um, you talked about the integral products and the modular products, and uh, to me it seems that there is uh, an aspect of time here, that uh, there is a planning phase and there is a, a, a production phase, and uh, if you're thinking of a um, an integral product as a product that needs um, highly specialized uh, uh, workers uh, adjusting all the features of the uh, uh, complete product to each other, so you have the Sony television that needs a very, very high uh, highly skilled adjustments in order to be absolutely top-notch. Um, and on the other end of the scale, you have the PC, where you have this digitization that uh, basically you, you care about zero volts and, and five volts or 1.72 volts or something like that, and anything in between that is going to be put into one of those two buckets. We have a lot of uh, tolerance. Mm -hmm. Then uh, basically uh, you don't uh, create a PC without coordination. It's just that it happens earlier. So the finished product doesn't need to be adjusted for zero volts and 1.72 volts, whereas the Sony te television needs this fine-grained uh, analog adjustment. So basically, uh, you could say that the integral product is a product that hasn't been made sufficiently digitable to be really robust when uh, being assembled. But that doesn't mean that you've gotten rid of the coordination. It just means that it happens earlier. Right, right. I, I, think, I think you're quite right and accurate. I think, well, because of time limit, I talked only about product architectures in certain, uh, well, design phase. Also, you have planning phase, and also you have production phase. Uh, we have product architecture and also process architecture. And uh, some product can be very integral in product architecture, but very modular in process architectures. And, uh, of course, there uh, because the problem solving cost and time is much shorter at, in the front end of product development, uh, it's much better to solve the problems, the modularized products, by m making lots of coordination in front to alleviate the coordination, uh, well, the disasters at the end of the production, uh, product pro uh, development process or design flow process. Uh, and that's something called the front loading. And that impact is enormous. Yes, so you're quite right that well, it depends upon the, the, the stages, and so we have to make a more careful analysis on this. 
and front loading is usually the name of the game. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think uh, he will he will stay at least during this coffee break. So let's let's come and talk to him if you have any more questions. At the end, thank you very much. And uh, to express our great, our great thanks to him, I would like to give him a very small gift from the conference organization. This is a, a doll made in uh, Hakata, Hakata Ningyo. I think it's kind of a inter very integral oh, yes. product. Yes, yes. So. I like it. <laughs> so, thank you for coming. Thank you very much.